You know what my number one question is for professional environmental activists? The one that always gets them tripped up, or more accurately, just shuts them up? I ask them why they never criticize the biggest oil and gas companies in the world. No, not Exxon or Shell or BP. Those aren't the biggest. I'm talking about ones way bigger than that, like Russia's Gazprom, the biggest natural gas company in the world, or Qatar Gas, the biggest liquid natural gas shipper in the world, or Saudi Arabia's state-owned company called Saudi Aramco, the biggest oil company in the world, or Pena the massive Venezuelan oil company, bigger than anything in Canada. I mean, if you're truly against oil and gas, you'd be against the biggest, meanest, least accountable oil and gas companies for sure, right? Not just the smaller ones in the West that also happen to be subject to the rule of law and a free press and independent courts and the discipline of the stock market and all the financial disclosures that come with that, right? I mean, if you're against oil tankers, surely you're against Saudi oil tankers bringing oil to North America, not just proposed Canadian takers to ship oil from Canada to the world, right? Oh, they hate these questions because they have never protested against OPEC, not even in a harmless, safe way, like putting out a simple press release. They just don't. I mean, here's example number 42 of me asking a professional protester this very question. How come you never protest outside the Saudi embassy then? Is there a Saudi embassy here in Hamilton? No, but there's Saudi embassy in Ottawa, and there's uh, uh, Saudi and Algerian oil being coming into Canada. I'm probably sure I've been to protests around those areas. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Outside the Saudi embassy? I bet you I, haven't. I've been, to, I've been to Ottawa and protested a bunch of, a bunch of embassies there. Do you so. even know where the Saudi embassy is? I don't think you've been there, Mike. No, I don't think I have either. Now, why is this? I think part of it is anti-Americanism, anti-Canadianism. I think there's a kind of counterculture radical that always hates our own country. It's not new. I mean, during the Cold War, there were Russian sympathizers, especially in the media and Hollywood. In the late 1930s, there were people in the West who sympathized even with Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin. The idea of hating your country, some weird psychological, emotional issue expressed as politics, is not new. But is that all? I, I think another part of the reason is that it's just easier to criticize the West. I mean, if you want to visit the oil sands, even fly a little plane over them, no problem. Just hop on an Air Canada or a WestJet plane to Fort McMurray and then rent a little plane for a couple hundred bucks, boom, you're done. But you can't just fly to Saudi Arabia or Iran and hop on a little plane and fly over their oil facilities, boom, you're dead. They'd kill you if you tried. If you break into the Calgary Tower or the Kinder Morgan oil facility in Burnaby or the Line 9 pumping station in Ontario, the police let you get away with it with at most trivial charges of mischief. You try that in an OPEC country, you're dead. So part of it is just laziness and ease and selfishness on the part of the antis. They just care about their own comfort and safety. Too much to go after the world's worst oil and gas producers, so they go after the gentlest ones, even though we're much smaller here in the West. But what about something more malign? What about OPEC countries actually paying for anti-oil, anti-fracking activism? I mean, we all know that environmental groups are fundraising all the time, and there are plenty of useful idiots in the West who are happy to pay for that. Idealistic students, naive old grannies, Marxist professors, whatever. But what about an OPEC country outright paying for anti-oil sales propaganda? I mean, they'd have to hide it well, right? Because if we knew that an OPEC country was behind the anti-oil sands or anti-fracking groups, that would instantly discredit them because we'd know it wasn't for any noble, idealistic purpose. It would be because they wanted to sell their conflict oil and gas instead of our ethical oil and gas. And where would Hollywood be then? They couldn't be morally preening self-righteous do-gooders. I've seen traces of these connections before, but nothing definitive. A couple years ago, the Saudi dictatorship hired a big law firm called Norton Rose, 2,600 lawyers, to threaten me and my little group called Ethical Oil if we didn't stop pointing out how Saudi Arabia treats women. Here, let me read an email they sent to my lawyer from their Saudi lawyer, and I quote, As you are aware, we represent the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. From our telephone discussion, I understand that you represent the Ethical Oil Institute. We expect to be contacting Ethical Oil on behalf of our client in due course. In the interim, kindly advise if you have authority to accept service on behalf of your client. <clears throat> they were threatening to sue me until I went public with that threat, and then they went back into their little hole in the ground, those cowards. And then there was the Venezuelans. They own a state-controlled oil company called Citgo. Here's their letter to Canada's National Energy Board. They wrote their letter saying they oppose Canada's Northern Gateway Pipeline because they don't want Canada to have any more export capacity for our Canadian oil. They want to keep their OPEC market share. Seriously, they put this on paper. Oh, and then there's Prince Al-Walid from Saudi Arabia and his leaked 
14-page letter to the Saudi Minister of Energy warning them of the threat, his words, to describe the oil sands and fracking. So we know OPEC is obsessed by us and by stopping us from becoming energy independent and, Allah forbid, actually cutting into their market share with exports one day. But what about proof of this? Proof that they actually would pay money to Hollywood types, to media types, and that Hollywood types would actually accept that money. Well, that's pretty tough to prove, isn't it? I mean, Hollywood would deny it. Like I say, I, I press people like Josh Fox and Greenpeace and the David Suzuki Foundation about why they never criticize OPEC countries and if they're on the Saudi payroll, and they just go silent. They would never admit it. Well, what if you sent someone undercover pretending to be a Middle Eastern oil tycoon? And if you promised $9 million of OPEC oil money to someone in Hollywood to make an anti-fracking movie, would that kind of money be enough to draw out Hollywood celebrities? Would they take your pretend OPEC money and agree to attack their own country and agree to keep the source of the money secret? Well, that is exactly what James O'Keefe of Project Veritas did. He went undercover and filmed several famous Hollywood types at different meetings and phone calls, agreeing to take OPEC money and agreeing to keep the OPEC money a secret. So a group called Project Veritas has released a 20-minute edited version of these meetings with Hollywood executives with some great stuff in them. It's undercover video. I'm going to show you a few clips of that today, but I'm also going to go through the full four-hour unedited version of this video because I, I've skimmed that, and there's so much gold in there, so many things that these Hollywood types say freely when they think nobody's watching, and we'll show you those on another. I mean, there's so many anti-American things, so many things that show they'll take money from anyone, any America hater, to do any anti-American errand so long as it's secret. We'll show you that later, but here, watch this. On March 27, 2014, Academy Award Governor Ed Begley Jr., Academy Award nominated actress Mariel Hemingway, and Sundance Award winning producer Josh Dekel were caught on tape at the Beverly Hills Hotel meeting with a man named Muhammad, who they believed to be the son of a Middle Eastern oil family dynasty, to discuss the funding of the next anti-fracking film to the tune of $9 million. Muhammad was introduced to them through citizen journalists posing as ad executives purporting to represent Muhammad and his family. Uh, if uh, Washington, D.C continues fracking, America will be uh, energy efficient, and then they won't need our oil anymore. Our motivation is, uh, my motivation, my client is, we're, we're, we want to, I'm, I'm trying to help please, his bottom please, line, please, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It's fine, we we'll get that. Get, uh, You're in with us on, on this side, right? Oh yeah, knowing where the money comes from. It's only at this time. This table, that doesn't go farther than this table. No, absolutely. I would never right. say that. Washington and Hollywood are a lot like it's all an illusion. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's all special effects. Yeah. Smoke and mirror. Yeah. 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 <laughs> as long as it, good, it looks good to the eye, it doesn't matter. Exactly. That's it. Washington and Hollywood are very similar in that one. So just to be clear, once these Hollywood types found out that it was OPEC money, they didn't walk away from the table in disgust. They said they'd be part of a cover-up because if they didn't keep it a secret, it would be, quote, a disaster. Like, they've got us in work for him, we shot videos for him, where, you know, it, it, just, they have so many rules and regulations, these NGOs, because they're 501c3s. And because, because they're under scrutiny. People want to know what, why are they motivated. And who's funding yeah. them. And the last thing they want to do is get tagged and for being the mouthpiece for some... Middle Eastern oil-funded film. That would be disastrous for them. Huh. Those Hollywood executives there, Josh Tekel and his wife, they sure sounded like they'd done this before, didn't they, these Hollywood enviros? I mean, listen to this. What do you think? This is not the first major project that we've had funded uh, to a funding source, which, you know, for various reasons, we didn't put it very unwise. So we're, we're aware of the reality of, you know, like... Money to us doesn't have uh, doesn't have a specific you know kind of like moral vibration. It's money. Um, so in that sense, we have no moral issue. But we know that a lot of people that would be necessary to pull this off, i.e., the Mark Ruffalo's and the Stephen Mamet and everyone in between. 
between, they would have issues. My client's interest is to end you know, American energy independence. Your interest is to end fracking, and you guys understand that. Correct. Yeah, super clear. Super clear. I mean, for God's sakes, that's Josh Takel, a Hollywood executive who has made several environmentally themed movies, explaining that the best way to do the movie would be to release it in 2016 to have maximum political impact. Look at this. Our timeline, what we're heading toward is 2016. Why is 2016 an important year? Because every major political office in this country, somebody will be running for office everywhere across this country. In, uh, so we're building to this. 2016, every four years. Every four years. So we're this building is, to. Four years, but then. We're building to a years. campaign that intersects with the election where we can say to the elected officials, look, we have these movies, we have this information, this is not a good idea, we need to stop this now. And that forces the elected officials to either be with us or against us. And no one's gonna wanna be against us because it'll be too big. What, did you think Hollywood was politically neutral? That it was just about entertaining people? Josh Takel just told you that it was about impacting elections. What do you think An Inconvenient Truth was about? What do you think Michael Moore's movies are about? I mean, we know they're left wing, but this is Josh Takel boasting about affecting U.S. elections, boasting to someone he thinks is a foreign OPEC financier. He is happily boasting about how he would do OPEC's dirty work in America. And what's so exciting about this tape that was released is that there seems to be more to come. At the very end of their excerpts, they have this 20-second clip with Josh Fox, the anti-American activist who made Gasland. Here, listen. Uh, hi, it's Josh Fox calling back. Hey, yes, this is Brandon. Hi, Josh, how are you? you know, obviously, there are projects that we are working on ahead of time uh, that we're working on now um, that do sound like they would be interesting to your client. Oh, my God. Now, we know that Josh Fox was a former employee of the Venezuelan State Film Authority to make Gasland. But I didn't know how he was eagerly, excitedly, greedily calling back fake OPEC oil tycoons salivating all over that foreign money. We can't tell from that clip if Josh Fox knew who was funding the film, but it seems that he can't wait to get him some of that OPEC money, too. Gee, I wonder... If that's why Josh Fox has made three anti-fracking movies in the past four years about American natural gas, but never a movie or even a press statement against OPEC. Huh. Well, we'll have to wait for the next Project Veritas video, won't we? This was just a taste of that 20-minute official edited video that Project Veritas has put on the Internet. But they've also put out on the Internet four hours of unedited video of Muriel Hemingway and Ed Bagley Jr. of a special I love you video message from Mark Ruffalo to take to the fake oil man, although apparently Ruffalo hasn't been told who was funding the, the film at that point. On another show, I'm gonna bring you our own choice cuts from those four hours, just for fun though, just watch, just to watch these morally preening, self-righteous one percenters in Hollywood scramble for all that OPEC money thinking they're in secret. It's gross, but hey, they're just actors. They'll read any line they're given, right? The real corruption is in the environmental movement itself. Unlike actors, they claim to actually believe in things. Say, you don't think any of that Arab oil money has found its way into Greenpeace, do you?